you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. Uh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Good big show. It's always the Chris Voss Show. It's a family that loves you but doesn't, but doesn't love you enough to loan you money. So we're not that kind of show, people. We, we love you, but we won't loan you money. That's a new one on the take. You're there. You're part of the Chris Voss Show family, but we're a family that loves you, doesn't judge you, at least not as harshly as your family might, but we still won't loan you money. So there's that. I need to write that down. Anyway, guys, we have an amazing young lady and author on the show. She's going to be bringing us here, her insight, her knowledge, her power, everything she's learned over the course of her lifetime, and disperse it upon us with these droppings of gold dust. Gold dust? I don't know. I'm putting a lot of power on her. Plus, I'm looking at the cover of her book. There's kind of some gold dust flakities on the front there. So anyway, she joins us. Her book is out June 18th, 2024. It's called The Power of Instinct, The New Rules of Persuasion in Business and Life. Leslie Zane joins us on the show today. She is an award-winning marketer. TEDx speaker and the foremost authority in harnessing the instinctive mind to accelerate brand and business growth. Like many pioneers, her provocative ideas were dismissed early on. In 1995, she founded Triggers, the first brand consulting firm rooted in behavioral science, where she continues to champion the primacy of the instinctive mind in brand decisions. Welcome to the show, Leslie. How are you? I am fine. Thank you so much for that kind intro, Chris. It's a pleasure to be here. This is going to be go. fun. There you go. I was just I was just laughing a little bit in my head when I heard the word triggers your company. Maybe that's why they should have named Twitter triggered. <laughs> anyway, so give us a dot coms. Where can people find you on the interwebs? They can find me at LeslieZane.com, on LinkedIn, Leslie Zane. Triggers.com is the name of the company. And on Amazon they can find the book, Power of Instinct, Barnes and Noble, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. There you go. So give us a 30,000 overview of your new book. So this is a book about leveraging the instinctive mind as opposed to the conscious mind mm -hmm. to scale brands, businesses, personal brands faster and more easily with less spending. And the essential idea is that you're working with the mind instead of against it because most marketing actually does quite the opposite. It turns people off. That's true. There's a lot of marketing like that going on nowadays that turns people off. You're just like, oh, God, another ad. Yeah, exactly. There you go. And there's not, it doesn't seem to be much creativity. And even like lately, the Super Bowl ads have been like, you're just like awful, man. What happened in the good old days? But maybe they weren't always good. Wait, is that a Billy Joel song? I'd have to, do we have to pay him for that? Anyway, so Leslie, tell us a little bit about yourself. What was your upbringing? What was, what, how did you become a writer and get into the, some of the business fields that you're in? So I grew up in Queens, New York, shout out to Queens, and I worked early in my career in some great companies like Johnson & Johnson and Procter & Gamble. Basically, I'm a career marketer. I've spent my life in marketing. And what I learned along the, the lines of just what was really surprising is that here I was at these great companies, and we, we weren't growing the businesses as, as they needed to grow. And that was, I was kind of shocked. How is this possible? Here I am at P&G, J&J. &J, these are, they know everything about marketing. Okay. And in fact, the businesses weren't growing. I realized very quickly that nobody knows how to actually drive business and brand results consistently. Mm -hmm. And I set out in 1995 to sort of follow my instincts about what would really work. I had these different ideas from everybody else. I thought we were over-promoting, over-discounting, barraging people with messages, and doing these things kind of to buy people's sales as opposed to to get them to instinctively connect with brands and want to buy them automatically. Mm. And so these ideas were like really foreign back then. I was talking about instinct. I was talking about the instinctive mind, and people literally thought I was nuts. <laughs> 
Well, you had and a good instinct for it. See what I, 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 I mean, I turned out to be right, but the science really didn't come out until many years later. And so it was very much pushing a rock uphill. And then I, so I left in 1995 with the express desire and intention of cracking the code on business and brand growth, being able to do this consistently for companies and work with them so that they could drive growth anytime that they wanted without relying on, you know, a great, some, some creative having a great idea in the shower, which is, you know, something, a, a sort of a random event. I there want to institutionalize growth. There you go. So how does this brain stuff work with conscious mind and instinct and all these different things? It's really quite fascinating. We can kind of think of the, the mind as an iceberg with the conscious mind on top of the waterline, above the waterline. That's mm -hmm. the part you can, of, of an iceberg you can see. And then below the waterline is the unconscious mind or the instinctive mind. And we can only access the conscious mind usually. And it turns out that that's where most marketing today is focused. In fact, all of us are marketers, by the way. Everyone is selling something. Everyone is trying to grow something, build their personal brand, build their business, get their kids into college, get that next job. Like everybody is a marketer in hmm. some way. I'm just but trying to get a date on Tinder. <laughs> there you go. You're a marketing. marketer too. Yeah. And essentially what we're all trying to do is to persuade the conscious mind to do something it doesn't want to do. Mm. And it doesn't work very well. And it doesn't work for two reasons. First, mm. the conscious mind is resistant to change. It's skeptical. It sees you coming and says, no, I don't think so. And then the second problem is that only about 5% of the decisions we make are made by the conscious mind anyway. Uh -huh. So we're basically putting all of our time, resources, and energy on only 5% of the decisions people make, whereas what is really where people make decisions is the instinctive mind. That's 95% of the decisions people make. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that when you focus on the instinctive mind, you can grow brands and businesses, really do anything that you want, persuade people much more easily because mm -hmm. the instinctive mind is malleable. The conscious mind is not. So oh. this is about taking the path of least resistance to the sale the conscious mind and barraging people with messages, promoting, discounting, all of that is taking the path of greatest resistance to a sale. There you go. Now, I, my understanding is, you're the researcher, so correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is you know, people buy off emotion. That's what I've always been taught in sales. Is that part of the instinctive mind then? I love that question. Mm -hmm. I love that question because that's another one that everybody's getting all wrong. Oh. Emotion is an outcome. We want people to feel a certain way, but they have to own that. And the mistake that the whole in industry has really made is that they've developed these advertisements and, and positioning directions that are, have emotion in them. So we're kind of trying to tell people how to feel. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that emotion, making people laugh or making people cry, goes in one ear and out the other. It's not sticky. Hmm. So the only way to really build brands is to physically grow them in the mind with mm -hmm. particular assets. And we'll talk more about what those are. But essentially, emotion is something that you want the consumer to feel as an end result. What we need as marketers to build is inputs and assets that go into people's memory structure so that the brand grows physically in the mind. That is the key. You have to grow your brand in people's minds in order to grow your market share and your revenue outside the mind. Oh, wow. So is it, is it a matter of repeating? How, how, can you give us some, like some sampling? I mean, obviously, people need to read the book to get the details, but can you give us like an overview of the sampling of how that's built? Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the command control center of choice. Mm -hmm. The command control center of people's brand decisions lives in the instinctive mind, lives in people's memories. And so let me introduce you to the concept of the brand connectome. There's actually a, a model behind me, a three-dimensional model of what a brand looks like in people's minds, that orange object. Oh, wow. And what it basically is, is a central node with a series of networks or pathways connected to it. 
Mm-hmm. It's the cum- So what a brand is, is the cumulative memories that get connected to a brand over time in people's minds. Some going as far back as childhood. Oh, wow. Yeah. Think like about a McDonald's. Like you were the baby Gerber. Yeah, McDonald's. Yeah, like when McDonald's, I was Coke, Pepsi. Yeah. I mean, these are brands that have been a very long time. They have a very large connectome, mm-hmm. uh, which means they have a lot of memories, positive and negative associations attached to them. And there's essentially three rules of how you build a brand connectome and what you need to do to keep it healthy. It needs to be large, and I mean physically large. A brand has physicality. It's actually a physical thing that lives in the mind. Mm -hmm. Two, it needs to have a lot of positive associations, not a lot of negative ones, because negative associations hold back growth. Mm -hmm. And then third, it needs to have distinctiveness or clarity, which is very different than uniqueness, which, again, we'll talk about later. But those are the three rules, large, positive, and distinctive. So if you, if you agree with me and we, if we agree, like those are the only three things that matter for growing brands, it means that a lot of the things that businesses are doing today are actually going against the brand connect dome and making business shrink in our, and making brands shrink in the mind instead of making them grow. There you go. There you go. That's, that's pretty amazing. I mean, it, it makes sense. You know, when I think about what you're talking about, when I think of all the brands that, you know, the imprint of McDonald's when I was a kid, my mother would take us there, In-N-Out Burger the same way. I remember sitting out in front of the In-N-Out Burgers before they had long car lines <laughs> and they were brand new. And you would, you would, you know, have that experience, the shakes and stuff. I don't, I don't think things always seemed to taste better back then, but maybe that's part of that, that, uh, that branding that you're talking about. The fascinating thing about a brand is it's not your logo. It's not your package. It's not even your restaurant, right? It's mm-hmm. all the associations that, that the brand has in your mind, the wow. things that you connect it to in your mind, like you just oh. described. Your parents taking you there. Maybe they took you to McDonald's for an ice cream cone when you got a good grade or, or when you were feeling down or whatever. Mm-hmm. There's all these connections. And so a brand is known by the associations it keeps. Oh. That is what a brand is, and that's how it works. So what we need to do as business people or you know, really anybody trying to build an, even an idea in people's minds is we need to create more connections rather than less. Oh. And so how do we connect more? I mean, some people might say, well, just run more ads. How do we connect more? I can give you a sampling of like three sure. rules in the book. And for the rest of the rules, people are going to have to read the book. Got to read the book. Uh, but let's, let's take three of the most common marketing rules, and I'm going to show you the rule that needs to displace it. So think about the 1950s and 60s, the Mad Men era. You know, mm-hmm. all of that was focused about trying to convince the conscious mind to change what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But that, but and that's what we thought back then that that's how the mind worked. So the mark, the rules of marketing were created for the conscious mind. What I'm saying is, those rules are going to get us in trouble because the instinctive mind, which makes 95% of the decisions, works differently, and so it needs a new set of rules. My book is essentially the old rules versus the new rules, and the new rules that have to disp- displace it so that you get greater success. So uh-huh. let's take the first rule. The, one of the first rules you learn in marketing is that uniqueness is the key to success. Stand out, be the purple cow, differentiate or die. Huh. Now, if you were following this approach and you were, let's say, a bottled water brand, you would never show a snow capped mountain or a babbling brook or a waterfall or a stream or, you know, pristine green fields with rivulets going through them. You would never do any of that because, in fact, you probably wouldn't even use the word, the color blue because you're thinking, you know, this is, that's too cliche. That's too generic. That's what everybody does. But it turns out those babbling brooks and snow-capped mountains are filled with positive associations that are very meaningful in our instinctive mind and very meaningful in our memories. And so why would you throw out the snow-capped mountain? Snow-capped mountain means pure, pristine, eco-friendly, you know, all of these positive associations, untouched by human hands, water from the glaciers. You want those 
positive associations. So mm -hmm. what you want to do is instead of throwing out the snow-capped mountain saying, I can't do that because it's familiar, you mm -hmm. take the snow-capped mountain, you render it in an abstract design the way Aquafina bottled water did on its packaging, and now you're creating a distinctive version of that snow-capped mountain that your brand can own. Oh. So the new rule is familiarity is actually more powerful than uniqueness, and distinctiveness is best of all. Mm -hmm. That completely goes in the face of what we've been taught as marketers, because everybody in the marketing and advertising industry is focused on uniqueness and standing out and creating things that look like they come, came from Mars. But in fact, those things end up turning people mm -hmm. off because mm -hmm. the human brain is hardwired to, to connect with the familiar and reject the unique. There you go. So there's a lot that goes into it, but you simplify it for us so that we can understand it and we can figure it all out and utilize it. And of course, people need to read your book to get the full details. And these are the new rules of persuasion and business and life. Can I use these rules in my personal life? Can I help figure them out on my for my dates and my Tinder, assuming I get any dates off Tinder? You can absolutely build your personal brand and you can build people's perceptions of you oh. using these exact same techniques because everything is a brand. Coke and Pepsi are brands. President Biden and President Trump are brands. The political parties are brands. You're a brand. I'm a brand. This show's a brand. Everything is a brand. Mm -hmm. And so once we understand the three rules, when once we understand all the rules, we can we can have a much greater impact because mm. it essentially helps you grow the brand faster in people's minds. Does there that make sense? There you go. That that certainly does. What kind of messages create the greatest amount of positive associations is one of the aspects. Why finding new customers accelerates growth and relies on existing ones as a trap. What why why is it that why why is it that finding new customers accelerates growth and relying on existing ones as a trap? I love that question as well, because most companies think that they should mainly cater to their existing customers. Mm -hmm. In fact, I read a recent Gardner survey that said 85% of, ex of CMOs were going to spend their time focusing on existing products and selling them to existing customers. And the problem with that is it's kind of a recipe for shrinking your business because your current customers always leave you. About half of every franchise leaves every year, which is a, a startling statistic, meaning there's churn in every franchise. And so if you're not constantly replenishing that leaky bucket, you're going to end up declining in the coming year. Your growth is going to decline instead of increasing. So what we say is your customer, your existing customer is a trap. Your new customer is really the opportunity for the greatest growth. And your new customer is going to be where you, you also learn what's holding you back. Because mm -hmm. if, your, if your new customer isn't using you, because they're obviously not a customer yet, they invariably have some negative associations that are standing in the way of them coming over. Your current customers aren't going to tell you that. So it's super useful to understand and spend time with the, your, the people you don't have and understand what's holding them back, those negative associations, because only then can you develop strategies and communications that take down those negative associations and bring people over. Wow. Wow. Another thing you're talking about is why emotional stories are not enough to drive trial and long-term brand loyalty. So emotional stories like those, you know, like they do those stories that make you want to cry you know sometimes you know it's got the puppy in it and that sort of thing and you know like what was that coke commercial where we are the world or something that everyone's seeing in the 70s or something so those emotional stories are not enough to drive trial and long-term brand loyalty yeah they're 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 just not we we talked about that a little bit earlier that essentially making people cry you know or making them laugh it kind of goes in one ear and out the other but what does stick is distinctive brand assets. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. A distinctive brand asset is a code or a cue in any of the five senses. A good example is the snow-capped mountain. That is a 
succinct code or cue in any of the five senses that that one's a visual cue that is so packed with positive associations and, and meaning that we already give it in our minds that it goes into memory structure faster and it makes your brand expand in people's minds faster as well. Hmm. So that is how you actually need to build your brand through verbal triggers, through visual triggers. These are the things that actually get lodged in people's minds Mm -hmm. and end up growing brands. Though that's you your go. toolkit, so to speak. There you go. Build your brand. Make it smarter and all that good stuff. So uh, what are some examples maybe of, of you've seen of people that have really successfully used your your techniques and stuff in the thing? Is it, do you have any stories we can pull that you can disclose? I can't talk about my clients, but yeah. what I can talk about is the people and businesses that are using these techniques already. Mm -hmm. um, some of them do it almost by accident, but they're just really, really good at it. What I've done is created a system for those things that are random events and making them institutionalized. But let's take Taylor Swift. Ah. If you were a country music star, you would think that you should, and you follow the rules of marketing, which basically say that you, your brand can only stand for one thing because that's the old rule. Your mm -hmm. brand should stand for one thing. And if you were Taylor Swift, you would only stick to country music. You would have you know, a, a very professional relationship with your fans the same way everybody else does. And you wouldn't stray from that country music sound because you would be afraid to turn off your current audience and go into something new. Maybe they won't like your new sound. Maybe they'll be turned off. Maybe they'll think this doesn't fit with who you are. But Taylor Swift did not do that. Rather, what she did was she explored her own creativity. She did pop music and folk music and dance music. I mean, she's really done a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. And little by little, she expanded that brand connectome with more and more branches. Mm -hmm. She also has sort of a multiplicity of relationships with her fans, not just on the professional side, but she almost gets to know them like personally. Mm -hmm. People call her mom. <laughs> they think they're her friend. They think they know her. They have dreams about her. I mean, it's really like a multiplicity of connections in the mind. Yeah. And so sounds that a brand. Sounds a bit stalkery though. <laughs> it's a brand that just keeps growing and growing and growing. And mm -hmm. it's because she has so many connections in the mind. So that's mm. a perfect example of one of these rules, mm. uh, the, the new rule being have as many associations and as many connections as you possibly can, because that's how you get to be large and positive in, in people's minds. Ah, there you go. Yeah. I mean, and imagine her lyrics of her songs generate different emotions that maybe connect people. I don't know. Is that a hundred percent. And she also mm. keeps in reintroducing her old music to new generations while she's expanding her new music. And so she just, she keeps everything alive. And that's actually another really important technique that we use at triggers, which is keep, stop, add. If you want to evolve your brand and you want to make it healthier, you want to keep the positive associations you have. So that's why I use the Taylor Swift example, because she keeps reinforcing the positive associations about her old music to new generations. Stop the negative associations that are, you know, not helping you. Mm -hmm. And then add the new positive associations through growth triggers, like the Snowcap Mountain, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's how you bring new people in. And that's how you always keep your brand alive. If your brand is not constantly growing, mm -hmm. essentially it's going to be dying. Yep. If it's not growing and dying. The whole is in the book there. 100%. Definitely, definitely. So final thoughts as we go out, tell people where to pick up the book. Yeah, so I, I would say, look, th there's a, an amazing opportunity for, for everybody here. Instinct is the most powerful force for changing human behavior, and harnessing it is the key to really growing anything faster and more easily in, in people's minds. And that's the secret to success. And it, it literally applies to anything and everything. You can get my book on Amazon. You can get it at Barnes & Noble. If you want to make a bulk order, you can do it on, on Porchlight. 
but I'd love to link with people. And if you have questions or want to engage, you can find me on LinkedIn under Leslie Zane. Mm -hmm. And I, I just really hope that my sharing all of this learning that I have over the past 30 years will be helpful to people so that they can achieve success faster and more easily as well. There you go. There you go. Hopefully we will. Give us the.com as we go out for your website and people can take a look at that too. Triggers.com and LeslieZane.com. There you go. Thank you very much, Leslie, for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Chris. This was a lot of fun. There you go. And thanks for us for tuning in. Go to Goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Voss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Voss, Chris Voss, one of the TikTok and and all those crazy places on the internet. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. We'll see you guys next time.